Um, I'm also going to show you guys uh, the store, what it looks like when you buy all the stuff. Be gone. I just... Die. Um... Alright, so that's it for the story. Now for the store. Alright, so you, you get these factions and stuff. Um, locations. Um, other monsters. Other monsters. Um, you can only unlock the two Godzilla classics by code. Like, the original Godzilla and the later, newer one. Um, alright. Alright, so we got concept art, uh, the alien, queen lady. We got this, um, Miku, the, that, um, uh, monster sympathist. I think his name's Admiral, it's not Admiral Yarn, I'm thinking of Star Wars. Um... Of course, we got the jerk, um, Crystalac. He is a new monster. Same with Obsidious. I already pressed that. Okay, so that's Tokyo. Godzilla standing in Tokyo water. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. We got London from London View, and then from the ground, that's what London looks like up there. Seattle. Looks like the apocalypse. And it also kind of reminds me of the Mustafar system from Star Wars. Giant crystal growing in uh, New York. San Francisco. Earthquakes in San Francisco. I like this picture. It's got a really nice reference where it shows either Godzilla from the 1990s or Godzilla 1954 standing in the background. I liked it. Sydney Opera House. City. Streets. More Sydney streets. Godzilla overlooking Sydney. Crystal formations. Obsidious burning uh, buildings in Seattle. And then him, I guess, being created. Alright. Gallery 2, we got all the... I actually want to show you guys this stuff first. Because otherwise you're going to really not see the good stuff. He's like, whoa, don't want to don't wanna touch that stuff. Baragon fighting Ghidorah. That one I didn't really get. An alien trying to destroy the ship even more. Here you fighting off what's left of that crystal. Fire Rodan. That's the building that you had to destroy before. I don't know what that was about. I, I guess it was... Uh, something to pass the time? I don't know. New York City. Alright, so now we have, like, their intro spawns, I guess. There, There is not supposed to be sound. It's just, um, animation showing them. Like, he just got out of the water. He's like, sup? Oh. Oh. Oh, no, no. Ugh. Sure, there were no direct consequences from that. We've seen this. We've seen this. Um, I don't think you guys have seen this.
Oh yeah, you have seen it. And this one also. Okay, so my sister, when she was a little younger, thought that this was her favorite character. Because for whatever reason, it reminded her of Titanic. I don't know. He just reminds me of, like, a Power Ranger. Go, go, Power Rangers! Fire Rodan. And yes, it's Fire Rodan. There's two types of Rodans. We've got Mothra Larva and Normal Mothra. Yeah! The newest monster. It would have been awesome to see him in a movie, maybe. I don't know. Same with Obsidious. They were really cool looking characters. They're hard to control, though. Alright, so. Uh, Simon Strange, by work designer, talks about the environments in Godzilla and Leech. This yeah. is Simon Strange, developer on Godzilla Unleashed, which is coming later this year for the Nintendo Wii. Today we're going to take a look at the monsters, and the monsters in the middle of the city. Quite changed in the time. Uh, the first thing you'll notice here are the ubiquitous molecules. The new volcano has wiped out most of the city, and lava is flowing through the green streets. Uh, this upheaval is somehow connected to the new crystal that you can see in a few different flavors scattered around here. These crystals are also making all the monsters go over there. Drawing them into the city and making them battle to devastate them. Charge up Electronet and enable high-wide nanofiber current output! Although, it looks funny this is going to be our first glimpse of our new water technology over there by the docks. Um, I'm just going to talk to Steve that comes up with a lot of water games. Uh, we try to capture the feel of the real cities, and I think uh, a lot of the accurate details really come through, despite the obvious differences between reality and what we'll see in our film software. Um, hopefully the road will be down here in the cave with the number of towns and names of the Alright, so I'm not really sure what they were trying to get the message through, but it probably would have been a lot better if they didn't have the, like, the noise going on. I think that was kind of stupid, but, eh, nothing wrong with it. Today we're taking a look down under at Sunny Sydney, which in our Ah, uh, down under. I get it. The crystal infestation in this area has dropped temperatures, freezing the ocean and the land, which makes it a rather uncomfortable place for humans to live, but hopefully it'll be a fun place for the battle of giant monsters. Something I want to bring attention to as we spread across the snow is our liberal use of bump mat terrain. Bump mat terrain is something we haven't seen done very much yet on the Wii, but we're employing it. All to units converge to take down! Really helps the <laughs> Stand by. Our other next thing to do is our dynamic building construction is take a look at the building below. You can see that they really look like the monsters ripped through them. All of that damage has been procedurally generated as the monsters ran through the city. So our environments have really taken the lead to both static and dynamic. I hope we'll see you again soon. Get down! As you reveal even more environments in the game, along with their unique destructive themes. Another thing I didn't understand is why would they put just two maps and just end it there? I don't know, I guess the, the art directors are lazy. Uh, I think this is one of the trailers. Yeah, this is one of the trailers for Godzilla. Seems to me that Godzilla keeps getting bigger and bigger each time a new movie or something comes out. It's weird.
this is just a couple of Godzilla classic movies. Um, this movie trailer right now, the first one they show is actually the movie I was talking about where Anguirus first appeared. But this was Godzilla's second movie. I've seen that one. I've seen this one. Uh, like, this is the movie, and then after uh, this movie happened, uh, Ghidra showed up, Godzilla became a good guy. That movie was good, the, the first one. Even though it was black and white, I thought it was a good movie. Then again, I think every Godzilla is basically a good movie. That one I actually own. Um, this was also the one I was telling you about. Um, I saw that movie. It comes right after that one, and those are not Vortac. Those are the pe planet people of Planet X. Uh, this movie is kind of weird. I don't know really why. And then that monster there, Gabra, only appeared once. Because apparently it was the kid's monster. I don't know. Um, Terra Mechagodzilla. Second movie that that Mechagodzilla showed up in. First movie Titanosaurus was in. And they were all good movies, actually. Um, Godzilla, the Godzilla movie series, um, they only did 24 movies. I know a lot of you guys are probably saying, ooh, that's a lot. Uh, maybe. And God, the Godzilla franchise is right now 59 years old. And uh, they've been doing this since 54. Um, I'm going to do at least one, uh, maybe... No, I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add four Godzillas. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna be Godzilla 1990s because I really don't play them that much. Um, why don't we just do it on Monster Island? I think that's a good one. Um, I'm going to end it here quick so that way I can show you guys